Hi and welcome to SCW here on YouTube.com. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. Please subscribe right now. Leave any comments in the comments section. Please like and share the video as well. It's time to have your say because it's time for the Q&A. Ask SCW is back once again answering your questions in the wrestling community. If you want to ask a question and get a shout out on the next video, then you can leave a comment here on YouTube or you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, make sure to leave the hashtag AskSCW, and of course, as I say, everything should be coming up on your screen right about now. Uh, make sure to check out Wrestling Customs 24-7 as well, a small business with custom-made championships, including WWE, uh, AEW, Impact, uh, and a re release today is New Japan as well. Uh, sneak peek should be coming up on your screen right about now as well. Uh, so make sure you go and check them out. Uh, honestly, fantastic, well-designed belts, a small business as well, uh, delivers to the UK only. Uh, but let's get straight into it, shall we? We've got plenty of questions from Twitter this week. Let's go into the first one right now from Joseph Ashcraft. And he asks, why did WWE release Zelina Vega? Uh, well, it's a great question. Of course, it is the hot topic this weekend. Of course, Zelina Vega being released by WWE. And of course, the information coming to you today comes via PW Insider and WrestleTalk as well. And it looks to be uh, to do with the Twitch and Cameo stuff. Of course, WWE um, taking over everybody's uh, you know outside accounts that they were doing, whether they were popular on Twitch, Cameo. Um, WWE said they had to put a stop to those channels and stuff going forward. Of course, um, Zelina Vega, she, like Paige, has continued to use Twitch. I believe also that Zelina Vega started her OnlyFans page as well, which I believe was related to her cosplay uh, attire that she's been promoting as well a lot on social media. Uh, and she's been quite, you know, vocal when it comes to unionization as well, along with Paige. Uh, she even put a status up supporting it uh, moments before WWE announced her release. So uh, clearly it seems a bit of dissension, perhaps people not agreeing either side. WWE did say that they were going to find to spend or even fire superstars um, that were going to continue with these accounts after WWE had set a date for them to stop them. Uh, for me personally, Personally, I'm going to look at this and give my opinion on it. Um, I think WWE have probably received a lot of backlash from what I've seen on social media. And I think it's quite well deserved when superstars are, you know, they are kind of independent contractors. So they are able to do this outside stuff. They are effectively working for themselves under WWE. If they were strict employees only and everything was linked under WWE and they couldn't start something up without WWE's permission, I would say perhaps it would be a different, you know, a different scenario, a different case. A lot of these superstars are looking for alternative methods of bringing in, you know, an income, especially during this pandemic time. Uh, we don't have live events, which I know, you know, it limits the appearances that superstars can have in the ring and of course they they have built those names up they've built those channels up from the ground themselves it makes you believe that perhaps maybe they should have been able to continue those and i think wwe were wrong to release Zelina Vega over this, in my opinion, for those reasons. And I do also believe, and again, it's just an opinion this, that if this was Roman Reigns that was doing this rather than Zelina Vega, I don't see WWE releasing Roman Reigns. But going back to Zelina Vega, I would turn around and say that I think she was someone that had a lot of potential. And it's a shame we don't get to see that potential uh, realized within WWE. I think that she is on the mic. She is fantastic. I think that she took Andrade to a whole new level when she was in NXT. Um, I would have loved to have seen a partnership with her and Alistair Black I think that that was what Alistair Black was missing on Raw and Smackdown I think was Alina Vega by his side his real life partner I think that both of them could have blossomed together up the ranks and of course with Zelina Vega she was recently only as you know as recent as Clash of Champions in the women's championship picture some would have argued that perhaps that was too soon um, but I do think if Zelina had been given more time to develop I think she would have been uh, a top talent on Raw or Smackdown whichever side of the brand she was on at that time when she's been released with Smackdown I do think she would have had the opportunity to have got better uh, and would have got more TV time but Sadly, it's not to be, um, but I do believe for her, she'll be obviously happy to continue on with her Twitch and cameos going forward. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people in the wrestling community uh, will give her that support, and I think rightly so as well. You should give her uh, support for this. Uh, she'll have the chance to apply her trade somewhere else. Hopefully, someone like AEW or Impact Wrestling uh, would really uh, would be good to, to take her in because, like I say, she's got a lot to offer. There's a lot of potential there with Zelina. I do think that... Uh, you know, this could be something that WWE will look back on in a couple of years' time and say, God, we, we shouldn't have let her go, really. This was a big mistake, uh, which is what I think it could prove to be. So um, this will hopefully end up being someone else's gain. Of course, it'll be disappointment around that Zelina Vega has been let go from WWE, but maybe even Zelina herself uh, may look back at this uh, as a time going you know, back when you look at it and say, hey, 
it, this happened for a reason and I'm better off and happier off for it. Next question coming from Dylan Ketchum. Um, do you think Alistair Black will get fired after Zelina got released? Uh, well, this is very interesting as well because we're going to link this now into a wrestle votes who are very reliable uh, and said that uh, regarding Zelina's release, that some of it was to do with, uh, of course, the Twitch stuff that we were going on in the last question, but um, there seemed to be dissension both sides. And not that this is a direct link, but Alistair Black recently did ask to go back to NXT and that was rejected. Now, clearly, Alistair Black is another one of those talents that has not been booked well since going to the main roster. I mean, he's been on SmackDown Raw and SmackDown uh, and, you know, it's no nowhere near the booking standard that he was like in NXT. There was a period where Paul Heyman was pushing him on Raw and it looked like things were going to go well for him uh, but of course the second that Paul Heyman was no longer involved with Raw Creative, uh, he's gone back to square one for Alistair Black. He's gone heel, he lost his great music um, of course the music can't really necessarily be helped but the booking side of things can be helped and uh, when you look at the draft you could see in the pecking order where he is in WWE it's not very high and I don't really think he's been on TV uh, since we've gone over to Smackdown which really doesn't say a lot for the future for Alistair Black so um, will he be released I'm not so sure but I maybe might push for it um, the thing with with Alistair Black or if we want Tommy End um, he has got a unique look he's great in the ring and you do know that he've, he's not been utilised in WWE. He would be an asset somewhere else. I mean, we mentioned that already AEW Impact Wrestling for Zelina. It's the same thing if Tommy End was to be in one of these promotions. Because, I mean, particularly Impact Wrestling, you've got a world champion waiting there. I think he has that potential in AEW as well. Um, it's just, you know, if or when. Uh, will it happen? I'm not so sure. Could it happen? Uh, it certainly could, but I think it would be coming to the terms of a release uh, unless Alistair Black really uh, starts really pushing for it uh, and does things to press WWE's buttons. Maybe that would be a way that it will be granted, but um, time will tell, I think, is where we stand on this one. I wouldn't be surprised um, either way if he was to stay or if he was to go. If he stays, I don't see much for his future currently in WWE because his best time was in NXT and they're just not booking him right or Raw or SmackDown. Uh, and if he wants to go outside of WWE, I do think he could be successful, which could then go back into WWE's favour where they turn around and say, well, maybe it's better if we just keep him and, uh, you know, he can't thrive under a different promotion. Dan, the man, Williams, Mr. DWE here on Ask SCW for us next now. Uh, now that the Seth feud is over, what is next for Ray and Dominic Mysterio? Uh, for Dan, he would love to see them go for the tag titles versus the Street Profits. That would be great. Uh, and I think it would be great. And um, I mean, it does actually feel like it's finally over with Ray and Seth Rollins, which uh, is amazing, really. Um, I still don't think the uh, Aaliyah and Murphy stuff is finished uh, for the time being. It'll be interesting to see if there's twists and turns of what's going to go on with that storyline going forward. But I do agree with you. As for Ray and Dominic, um, the tag team division is where they are best suited. I think initially they'll probably go in a few to build them up towards the tag team championships. Maybe Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode are probably or likely superstars that they could be going against but I do see them going for the tag team titles and um, I mean there's still enough time to go between now and Wrestlemania where they could have them win the tag team titles and you know have them turn on one another and actually have you know Ray versus Dominic at Wrestlemania so I, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if that happened um, as I know it's something that I know Ray wants to do at some point before he retires um, but at the same time I think the tag team division is where they're best suited Dominic Mysterio is criminally not being used on Smackdown enough since moving over his his ring time has been very limited so far I want to see him back in the ring uh, now Ray Mysterio is good to go uh, it had a great performance I think him and Seth was a great uh, uh, no holds barred match on SmackDown this past week. I'd like to see him go for the tag team championships. If I had to set a timeline on when I think they win those belts, I'm going to go for Royal Rumble. Um, I'd love to see it go to WrestleMania, but there's just not enough teams to make it last till then. So uh, I will go with the Royal Rumble. And I, I agree with you. I think that um, definitely them against the Street Profits, that's definitely money. It's a great match and uh, it's a pay-per-view level tag team match. And I could see it happening potentially, as I say, maybe TLC, but um, I would definitely say by Royal Rumble, uh, I'd expect to see this match happen um, either way. But I expect Ray and Dom uh, to be SmackDown tag team champions in the near foreseeable future. Speaking of tag team championships, our next question comes from Austin Whitley. Uh, with the Young Bucks being AEW tag champions, who do you think they should eventually lose them to? His pick is Jurassic Express. Uh, 
And what a great choice as well. I just want to say very quickly, I love your choice because um, if we look to another championship, uh, the TNT Championship, Darby Allen obviously recently beating Cody at Full Gear. The big thing is of Darby Allen winning that and becoming the face of TNT. It's what's seen as one of AEW's homegrown talents, not one of these ex WWE guys that's holding a prestigious championship within the company. Jungle Boy is so highly thought of in AEW. So for me, this would have go around that similar mold. Some of the AEW needs to do in building um, you know, their brand new own stars. And you can say, yes, these stars have been in other minor promotions, but we're talking these guys that haven't been in WWE. And you look there and say that them beating the Young Bucks would be a big deal. They had a great match earlier this year, I believe, was at the All Out pay-per-view. Um, so I'd be a massive fan of that idea if it was to take place. Um, there are two tag teams for my choice that I would love it to happen with. I love Penta and Phoenix, the Lucha Bros, to be the guys that are AEW Tag Team Champions. They're one of my favorite tag teams in the world. Uh, Proud and Powerful as well, Santana Ortiz, another tag team being criminally underused right now in AEW. Um, but I do believe that um, they're going to try and make um, FTR and Young Bucks a long program. I, I don't see it being now it's one and done. Um, I think they rushed an idea to make the, you know, the idea of the pay-per-view match more prestigious with having if the Bucks lose they don't have the opportunity to win the, you know win the belts ever again I can't see FTR just leaving it there so I expect the Bucks will have a few matches leading perhaps towards Revolution and maybe we might get the rematch I can see this being a best of three series and um, but as well what we should also look in the idea of with with AEW Tony Khan or TK as uh, he's uh, you know said with some of the boys back in in AEW uh, as promised some big things going forward for AEW and Pack was just the start of it this past week so um, I still think we could get partnerships with New Japan and Impact Wrestling as well. Uh, so it would be interesting to see if some of those teams come over and maybe win some of the championships. You only have to look. John Moxley is currently the New Japan Pro Wrestling United States Champion as well as the AEW Champion. So um, there is potentials that we could have where you know cross promotions come come together. We may get some dream matches. We may find you know some of the best tag teams we've got in New Japan Impact against the Bucks. It could happen. Um, time will tell. But um, I like your suggestion. Jurassic Express makes a lot of sense for them to be the team to beat the Bucks. If I had to make, lay a prediction on it, I still think FTR, that's not finished with the Bucks at this present moment. Jamie, the controversial one, Holmes here with an awesome questionnaire regarding MJF and, of course, and the Inner Circle. Um, where do you see MJF and the Inner Circle going? He thinks of one of three things. We've got number one, MJF fully takes over from Chris Jericho and kicks him out of the group. Uh, number two, Sammy Guevara gets removed as he seems to hate MJF the most. Or number three, we get two splinter factions, one pro MJF and one anti MJF. Uh, and the beautiful thing is with this is that all three of those suggestions make so much sense and logic that all of them could happen. Uh, and that's what the beauty is with this question and is why I like it so much is the fact that it is one of right now the most unpredictable um, you know, storylines in wrestling. There's no which way for definite of where this is going to go um, but I think that your three suggestions are the most likely and best suggestions. If I had to rule one of them out I would rule out the Sammy Guevara one purely because I know he's the one that's being currently targeted most um, but the thing that's funny is that like we said point three we could get a pro MJF against an anti MJF there's clearly daggers being stared between Wardlow and Hager uh, constantly especially with the pictures even the one that was posted uh, with them in Vegas clearly they're there to do uh, the promotion video of what they're going to put on for this Wednesday which I can't wait for on Dynamite this this week um, I thought that Jericho being kicked out of the group seems like the most obvious when we got to full gear um, looking past full gear now I do still believe that we're going to get uh, the third point as the most likely. I, I saw Jericho there, pro MJF. I think Hager as well, despite the fact that he's not trusting Wardlow, he is on the side of Chris Jericho. I see him staying put. One thing I don't want to see, I don't want to see Santana and Ortiz split. I don't want to see him on different sides. I want them to remain together. I wouldn't mind seeing the four members there against Sammy. Um, Santana and Ortiz. I think that that would be a fun trios match that they could put together. Wardlow perhaps being on the outside or Hager depending 
on which member isn't in the in action but um it could be fun it could be very interesting to see how it's all going to play out there's many different ways and twists and turns it can go uh, and the fact you've got seven members here it's too many for a faction so uh, i agree someone is getting the boot someone is getting the chop uh, one thing that is fun from it as well is that uh, when we do look at sammy Guevara, for example um he is now showing the potential that he could have as a baby face um i think that fans would be on board with that if he was kicked out of the group or was to turn on MJF. I think that that definitely is a match that uh, is definitely going to happen. If Chris Jericho is kicked out of the group, of course, it's a great chance then to keep the inner circle so strong. Uh, Chris Jericho starting to transition to the commentary table as well gives him one last run as a baby face and can still you know, he still does those killer lines even as a face, so it can still kind of work. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how it goes forward. But uh, of your suggestions, I think all of them can happen. I think all of them are likely. Uh, it just depends which direction AEW decides to turn. Um, if I had to pick one right now, uh, I would actually say that I like most the uh, you know the pro MGF against the anti MGF. I think that uh, splitting them into almost two separate factions uh, feels the most likely. And I do believe as well uh, that AEW at one point were rumoured to be in the idea of trios championships with death triangle potentially if they reunite you can see as well with the kingston butcher and the blade then you've got four trios immediately you're starting to build that trios alliance there you've got private party and matt hardy you've got a division starting so um i wouldn't be surprised if they went down that avenue as well straight edge josh with our next question a new username here chloe price boy um what's the best mid-air finisher you've seen excluding the super kick and the rko as they are obvious picks you had to do that to me josh didn't you um especially when you look with the super kick i mean the one uh, back in the mid noughties with shelton benjamin when he came flying off the top rope to go into the super kick um the rko as well is always one that's been done so well evan Bourne, uh, of course being perhaps the most famous one that they've done with that and perhaps seth rollins as well uh, um, even though that wasn't technically from a ring rope, he still was very high up in the air. Um, to give then a creative one, something that's slightly like that, impact moves are the ones that work best. Like you say, they're super kick, RKO. When they're devastated in that effect, they come off more impressive. And one that I really liked back in the day was Jericho's Code Breaker. I love the fact that it was used with CM Punk quite a few times from mid-air used in. Evan Bourne is another one famously who uh, actually AEW made reference. Of course, Evan Bourne is Matt Seidel who once beat Jericho. He did that in WWE, but he also did fall victim to one of those mid-air uh, Code Breakers from Jericho. So that would be my answer for you because I, I really like the Code Breaker. It's a creative finishing move and at the time it really felt exciting and new when that was brought into the the game um, and for me uh, when it was used for mid-air finishers I think that it just was awesome it's a great way to finish the match uh, when someone's flying through the air and they hit with one of these big impact moves and uh, the code breaker for me is one that's criminally underrated in my opinion Next question coming from Arania Porter. And um, where do you think the current wrestling product as a whole is going in the near future like 10 to 20 years from now? This is an amazing question and um, it's very difficult to give a full answer but what I would turn around and say is um, looking at where we are now um, I will try and do what I think is the most obvious where I think the minor changes can go uh, going forward. I think the first most obvious one I think fans obviously will come back to arenas. Um, I'm hoping that within the next 12 months we can really start building towards getting back to that. It still may be a year or two away before we get back to full arenas and you know stadiums and stuff like that. Uh, but hopefully, um, once things you know improve in the world, we can really get back to you know how we want things going forward with our wrestling fans being in attendance because they bring so much to the shows. And I think that um, wrestling does suffer without its fan base, um, even though we're still getting what I think are some really strong matches and pay-per-views and, and a product overall in 2020. I still think there are things that we can look back at this year in 15, 20 years from now and say, God, that was awesome. And there was no one there to watch it. So in some ways, um, I think that when you look at that, uh, that will be something that we will look back on um, in one way, but we will definitely get our fans back. As promotions, I don't see much changing with a lot of promotions. We could turn around and say that perhaps the, the smaller promotions might start working together more. We're starting to see a lot of talents rather than signing with a promotion are doing short-term deals with promotions and doing multiple promotions at the same time. EC3 is a prime candidate doing Impact Wrestling up till Bound for Glory. Uh, he's now doing some work in Ring of Honor. It'd be interesting to see if that becomes more of the norm uh, for talents going forward rather and signing to one place doing you know appearances in places but at the same time for those superstars 
they're not going to get the main event level pushes if they are only doing part time in a company working for three or four months then moving to somewhere else Matt Seidel is another superstar that's been doing as well a Ring of Honor and AEW as of late so there are more than one superstar doing that but um, I do think when you look at those those small operations I still think they'll be there Impact never goes uh, everyone always says that Impact won't exist it, it will still be there uh, when we look back in 10 20 years from now uh, when we look to the other companies when we look to WWE and AEW this is where the main change I think will happen uh, with AEW I do think they will not be on WWE's level but I do think they will get closer I do think they will be established as the number two company in the world um, and I do think that they're going to become more and more appealing for bigger markets to or you know stations where it be you know USA or wherever may look at them and say they're worth a punt because they're getting ratings in they're going to be you know financially better to get hold of as a company WWE costs so much money and delivers only so much on what they you know are paying for where they can get a company that maybe for half of the price and you know on those platforms may bring you know maybe not similar ratings but not so far off and feel well hang on this is a better financial deal for us for WWE uh, they're still going to be the big dog in town. I don't see that ever changing. Uh, one thing is for sure, though, they are not going to be able to rely on the older talents as much. New stars will have to be built and will have to be made. Um, and I think for that, that's an exciting period. It's something that's been exciting for a number of years now is who are the people that are going to, you know, make the company going forward as the mega stars it feels that right now Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre are the top two the WWE have that faith in uh, the Fiend is the top attraction you've got the likes of Seth Rollins there as well and Randy Orton probably you know rounding off your top five right now in the company um you know we won't be able to continually rely on people like Goldberg and and, and Undertaker and that to be coming in um those days are going to be behind us now WWE have to build those new stars there is a chance though that will come to the stage where they'll be bringing Roman Reigns in for those one-off appearances as well that will still be topping the cards but they'll have to find new ways to build new stars and actually have we may actually have someone again at one point down the line w will realize we need to have someone of a cena level someone of a randy orton level someone of you know when we go back even further we can get an austin rock hogan level which i don't think we'll get back to those days but we can probably get someone that is around maybe the Cena level if it's booked correctly and it's done right and I think that that's what they should try and aspire to do as a company um, we talked about uni unionization earlier in the video and um, I wonder if that's something that potentially could happen in the next 15 to 20 years a governing body someone that is uh, keeping an eye making sure everything overseeing over all of wrestling I wouldn't be surprised if something like that was to come in so um it's interesting to see really what people's thoughts and processes are with this um you know it's, it's a very interesting topic and it's it's hard to say 100 percent what you feel and what you don't feel but i'm interested to know what people believe in the comment section what do you think in the next 10 to 20 years do you think will change in the wrestling world do you think we're going to be the same as we are now is it going to be as popular will it does it you know it arguably needs to get more popular than where it is right now will it get less popular if it continues the way it's currently going it feels that right now that it's an older demographic that's watching wrestling rather than a younger uh, and that's something that, that uh, every promotion really needs to work on they need to find a way to bring younger newer fans into this there are some that are still going in there but it's not as many as before it is still uh, arguably the old guard it is the people that have been around since the attitude era since the monday night wars those are the people that are the diehards that have been there for years and years and years and just won't go away just like myself so you know you need to find the, the the newer crop to be coming in so um that is something that needs to change as well over the next 15 to 20 years because otherwise the ratings will go down um and that's something that uh, does dress that needs to get looked into Mike, a talent habits Mike with our next two questions here for us now. And he says, Pat McAfee's faction versus the Undisputed Era has been booked well. Um, how would you book the Undisputed's return to NXT? And uh, in my opinion, why do the majority of older and long-term fans gravitate more towards NXT and AEW over Raw and SmackDown? And just a furthermore comment based on the first question, which of course we're going to tackle first. Um... If there is a TakeOver War Games match in December, then when should Undisputed Era return? We know Cole and O'Reilly can work as face, but uh, Strong and Fish can also work as a face. This would be interesting on how it is booked. Um, this is a really good question here, and we will start off with that, because um, if I look at it, I say that we are at the point now where I think uh, Pat McAfee's group needs 
uh, the Undisputed Era to come back. We're at the point now where if this uh, takeover is at the start of December, which is my belief, we're probably the first weekend of December, we need to now start booking that. We need to start having the, the main event in place or uh, certainly some matches in place. And it feels like we're going to need that. So I think this Wednesday is the place that UE, if they're all fit and they're good to go, this is the time they come back in, in my opinion. I think Pat McAfee has done a great job of building this group. When you look at it, um, it's been surprise after surprise with Lorcan and Birch of course joining him to begin with um, as I said I think they've done well as turning heel by the way I think Danny Birch in particular stands out and screens really well as a heel it's seen so much more personality coming out of his character since turning as a bad guy rather than a good uh, when you look as well with Pete Dunne coming in um, everything made sense when they gave the explanation everything came together um, my only thing that I struggle with with this group so far is the believability that it's long term. And my reasoning for it, um, hearing Pat McAfee saying the stuff of this is the greatest faction of all time. You've been together two weeks. You need to do something more than just, you know, take out the UE at one point and then believe you're the best thing ever. Um, it just screams to me that this could be war games and done. I just hope I'm wrong with that because I see a lot of potential in this group that we're seeing so far but going to your question of when the UE should return it definitely should be Wednesday and I've tried to think of the most creative way to bring them back in rather than them just all attack Pat McAfee after they're beating on Drake Maverick and Killian Dane at the end of the show I think we need to have a situation where Pat McAfee maybe they have that beat down they stand in the ring and Pat McAfee once again blowing his horn saying how great this stable is and we see Carl O'Reilly come out on his own the last one taken out but the first one coming back in like you said he's Probably, arguably, uh, outside of Adam Cole, he's the biggest baby face in that group. He was recently a main event, a takeover against Finn Balor. You turn around and say, right, okay, this guy comes out first. You can turn around and say, you know, right, okay, Pat McAfee. He's like, well, look, it's four against one. Come on down, we'll take you out again. We don't mind putting you on the shelf. Then we see Strong and Fish come out because Riley says, look, I'm not alone. It's four on three. Why not bring it on? I don't mind. We can take all three of you out in one go. And then we can see, you know, on the... Um, the Thunderdome style screens they have we can see Adam Cole on the backstage bit perhaps doing a video package of showing himself training getting himself back in ring shape he says look I was taken out I'm ready to go and the bad news for you is I'm back sooner than you think and then we see at this point all of them come around surround the ring Adam Cole was there Riley a fish strong all come in the ring all the big brawl breaks loose. Um, everyone's trying to break these guys apart. And then, of course, famously, William Regal will come out on that stage or will be on the screen and he'll screen the words War Games. Uh, for me, it's the best way that they can do this going forward from now. I think it's logical of how they would book that. Um, and I think it needs to be done as soon as possible now because I do think if Pat McAfee's group does this again for another two weeks or so before we get this match... I do think it's going to start to become slightly repetitive and arguably slightly boring. I, that's just my opinion. But at the same time, I do think the work that's been gone into this up to now has been done very well. And I love the logic that's been put in on the booking with this so far. As for your second question, which sort of touches in, in a little bit to the last question. Of course, we have so many of the older face bands, uh, fans and we need, you know, all the companies to find their way to bring newer fans into the product. But why do the older base fans prefer Wednesday night wrestling compared to Mondays and Fridays? And it comes down to a simple thing. It comes down to booking. Um, it comes down to, to logical booking, in my opinion. AEW uh, are fantastic at doing great storytelling. They're good and not just um, putting a story there with it's where win and losses matter, which is something Raw and SmackDown, nothing of the sorts. Um, but AEW has a great way of making the losers over at the end of the story as well as the winners and I think that's a great thing going forward because you you build your entire roster and the more they continue to do that the bigger stars these superstars become and of course there's still a big you know golfing class and there's still things AEW need to improve on um, but this is a great base of where they've started with and a lot of fans have noticed and recognized this and that's what's brought them in and the beautiful thing with AEW in particular is a lot of them had given up on WWE had even given up on NXT uh, and had said to themselves this is a new fresh company that gave this a go and perhaps have not watched wrestling for 10, 15 years, whatever. They're back in with whole hearts and they're really into what they're seeing now with AEW. As for NXT, it is, well, NXT is NXT, isn't it? I mean, let's be fair, since its inception, um, it's all been about the future. This is the stars of tomorrow and they've always had these great knockout takeover after takeover, uh, you know, five-star match after five-star match. You look at Gagano, Champa, that rivalry, stuff like that. This has been some of the best wrestling we've seen in the last decade. Raw and SmackDown, when it comes to those shows, 
just aren't in the same par as what NXT has delivered. Some will argue NXT probably right now is at one of its weaker spots since its inception, purely because of the, back, the fact that perhaps they've not got some of the longevity storylines that they had, like we just mentioned there with Gagano and Champa. Some of those superstars as well have not moved to Raw and SmackDown. They've been around for a long time in that position of NXT where it used to be just almost like a proving ground and you got yourself to a certain level. You went to Raw and SmackDown. We built the next superstars up. It's becoming more of a rounded base roster now. And I think people now start to realize that certain superstars aren't moving up as quickly as what they would like. But um, still with NXT, it, it provides uh, consistency, uh, something that Raw and SmackDown doesn't. I think that's why a lot of the fan base of the, of the older generation are used to that. They grew up in a time where they felt to themselves, you know, when they watched the Attitude Era, Ripper's Aggression, you know, a lot of stuff didn't make sense. Let's, let's, let's bring it out there, but a lot of stuff did make sense. And I think we like our logic and our storylines and we get that more consistently from NXT and from AEW. Raw and SmackDown do do it. And I do think as well that um, still a lot of the old hardcore wrestling fans, they are bred to watch Raw and SmackDown. You can see where the rating's gone so low. They still don't go away. They still don't like it. They still complain about it, but they'll still watch. Um, there's those fans that stick around but they, they much prefer Wednesdays, and the reason they prefer Wednesdays is for the reasons I've given. Last questions this week are coming from Anoob and Co. And um, do I think that Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are a bigger threat to Oscar than Reckoning? Uh, what are my thoughts on Jade Cardell being signed to AEW? And which storyline is the worst and needs to end before 2020 is over? Wow. Um, well, first off, I do believe that Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax are a bigger threat than Reckoning uh, to Oscar for the Raw Women's Championship. I feel self-explanatory. Uh, Shayna Baszler, one of the most dominant NXT Women's Champions of all time. Nia Jax is always in and around the championship picture, whether we like her or not, uh, on whichever brand she's on, which has mainly predominantly been Raw, if I'm not mistaken, since she's uh, come to the main roster from NXT. I do think that that's, there's still potential, I think, for a triple threat match. Uh, and I think I've explained that on here before, so I won't go into too much depth with that as I have previously. For Reckoning, she's stuck in Retribution. And Mia Yim, she's a great athlete. But the problem is, she is in the stable that is being booked horribly. Things haven't gone to plan with this stable. And I do believe that their booking isn't going to be so strong going forward. I feel that Reckoning is a placeholder for what they're looking to do in the future with Oscar. So, um, yeah, I would say, yes, Baszler and Jax are more of a threat to Oscar than Reckoning. As for Jay Cardiel, um, I thought that uh, what she did was fantastic on Dynamite. She come in, she made a bang. She made, you know, a moment that we're going to remember because I think her and Brandy, um, wow. I mean, I felt it was it seemed legit. They felt heat with these two from the get-go. Um, I was really invested watching this this promo. The idea as well of Cody versus Shaq, uh, which I talked about on This Week in Wrestling this past week and gave all the reasons of why I think it can be a big thing to do. They could always go down the mixed tag team route as well. Uh, this would, of course, take a lot of the workload off of Shaq. It would put it on the women, to be fair. But I do think that, um, I mean, Jade, she's done some stuff on Dark. Uh, Brandy has got experience in the ring. I think they could make this work and they could really make uh, a lot of eyes on the prize for AEW. It's something that I think would definitely bring um, more viewers in than they currently have. Whether people would stick around afterwards is a different question. But um, for what she did for an initial impact this week, I thought it was absolutely superb. And um, they need to have more women in this women's division that's going to feel that impact because AEW, this is their division the where they let, you know, they lack the most and uh, her coming in I haven't seen her do so much in-ring work but if she can deliver a promo like that she makes me a believer into the match i want to see and that is a very strong selling point as for storyline that needs to finish well i would have said ray versus seth but it finished this week so um that changed my answer very quickly um but i would say Aaliyah and murphy for me is the one that needs to be dropped i just feel it's a bit awkward watching these two um and of course a lot of people have their scrutiny with it um there's quite a few things really i could say that need to i mean the last sullivan stuff that he's done backstage recently that storyline just on baby steps and growing is a very awkward it very it feels the 2020 version of Heidenreich. So um, I kind of feel that those two kind of go hand in hand a little bit. I um, I wouldn't mind seeing either of those storylines finish. Last Sullivan for me just isn't working on TV. And if you are going to have to push Last Sullivan down our throats, he should be a silent monster. He should be just someone that comes in wreckage, causes carnage, destroys superstars, leaves again. I don't need this repetitive, boring 20 year old backstory that we've seen from superstars from even I say 20 going 40 years ago this is something we get from the 80s this is kind of that sort of level of where we're going with Lars Sullivan I've seen it before I don't need to see it again I don't believe in it 
and the, the story of me is just boring. Um, I did see in the comments, actually, that, um, of course, you had a conversation with Mike about uh, the, the Raw Women's Survivor Series team and Lana going through the table. I must admit, I do kind of enjoy Lana going through the table. It's not really going anywhere, but um, it's something that uh, is a spot you look forward to seeing every week. Everyone loves a table spot, um, so for me, I, I'm kind of okay with it. It's something that I think is going to lead to Survivor Series. I think after that, we'll probably come away from it a little bit. Um, I think it's just, it's just something to do while the Survivor Series team is together um i do think eventually they are going to part ways maybe you know in the next week or two so i think that one's going to finish as well um but i have said before uh, again going back to this week in wrestling i think the raw women's survivor series team is a complete mess i just feel that the way that's been put together they've not got the right members on the team for me where it could have booked and where it could have gone they've already done the match with with uh, rose and brooke against jackson baszler um so that match is not even something we could look forward to afterwards so for me, this feels a bit of a cluster mess. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the Royal Women's Division hopefully take a bit of better shape after Survivor Series. Because you've got Nikki Cross, you've got Lacey Evans, you've got Peyton Royce all sitting on the sidelines. I think they have a lot more to offer. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing them come back into the fold. Uh, but that's all from me anyway. Thank you for watching here. Ask SCW. I've enjoyed having you guys uh, putting your questions in as always. Thank you so much. Of course, the Q&A is nothing without you guys. So thank you so, so much. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumb up and uh, subscribe. Maybe hit the bell. Set the notifications to all as well for when videos do drop. Survivor Series predictions will be coming up on Tuesday this week. So make sure to look out for that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's all from me here. I hope you've enjoyed the video as always. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below of any of the topics discussed today. And also, if there's any particular styles of videos that you want to see me going forward do you like the longer based videos where i've got more content involved in one or do you want to see a bit more shorter videos done maybe you want to see more uploads but maybe five to ten minutes rather than saying i've taken everything and put it into one podcast instead how do you want to see it going forward let me know right now in the comments below but that's all from me anyway thank you for watching take care have yourselves a great one you've been watching scw here on youtube have yourselves a great day